All right, in this next video, we're going to look at the situation where we got complex eigenvalues. All right, so as we've seen in our previous work, finding the eigenvalues always comes down to finding the determinant of the matrix A minus lambda times the identity. And I'm going to verify what is being said here in the textbook that for this system, linear system we have here, it turns out that the, the roots or the zeros of the characteristic polynomial, right, the solutions of the, the equation where you set the determinant of the matrix a minus lambda i um, equal to zero come out to be complex numbers. All right, so I'm going to verify that. Okay, so looking at that same system there. All right, so we're just going to work it out. All right, so this is our matrix A. All right, so I'm going to go through the usual process. We're going to do A minus lambda times the identity matrix. All right, what we've seen from our previous work, right, that just amounts to taking the matrix A, subtracting off, multiplying the the identity matrix, which has one down the main diagonals and zeros in the off diagonal positions, means we're going to get lambdas down the main diagonal, and when we do the subtraction component-wise, we get negative 3 minus lambda, 1, negative 2, negative 1 minus lambda. So basically, we subtract lambda down the main diagonal. Then we take the determinant of that matrix. We multiply the main diagonal together. Negative 3 minus lambda. And negative 1 minus lambda, subtract the product of the off diagonal, negative 2 times 1, and then we just multiply all this out. All right, so we're going to get, multiplying the outside terms here, plot positive 3 lambda, all right, and then the, um, just multiplying the negative 3 through, we're going to get plus 3, and then multiplying the negative lambda through, it would be plus lambda, plus lambda squared. This is going to end up to be plus 2. So combining like terms, we end up with lambda squared plus, we have four lambda terms, and then plus five. All right, and then to, to find the eigenvalues, we take that polynomial expression in lambda and set that equal to zero. Now, as you can check, this does not factor. There's no factors of positive five that add up to positive four, right? The only factors of positive five are one and five, or negative one and negative five, and those will add up to six or negative six, respectively. So we have to use the, uh, the uh, quadratic formula. So x is going to, or not x, I'm so used to writing x. Lambda is what we're solving for, so we're going to have lambda is going to be negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus four times a times c all over 2a. There's your quadratic formula with blanks in there. And then let's substitute in those numbers. What's b? b is 4, so we're going to put 4 here, here. a is 1, so 1 is going to go here and here, and c is 5. Okay. Now simplifying that expression down, well we get negative 4 plus or minus the square root of 4 squared, which is 16, minus we get 20 there, all over 2. So you can see kind of what's happening there. We're going to get a negative underneath the square root, and that's where the complex numbers come in. All right, now, we look at that. We're going to write that as plus or minus the square root of negative 1 times the square root. Well, actually, we're going to do it the other way square root of 4 times the square root of negative 1, right? Four, negative 4 is negative 4 times 1, or sorry, it's 4 times negative 1. And the square root of negative 1 is what we define the complex number, imaginary number i to be. So it's going to be four, negative 4 plus or minus the square root of 4, which is 2, and the square root of negative 1 is what we denote by i, dividing the 2 up into both of those terms will give us negative 2 plus or minus i. All right, now again, the plus or mi plus minus means two solutions, negative two plus i, and then negative two minus i would be the two solutions. All right, so always we end up solving a quadratic equation. 
All right, whenever we find the eigenvalues, it just so happens, right, that not all quadratic equations are going to have distinct real solutions. All right, we might end up with complex um, number solutions, which would we, we would say that the quadratic equation does not have real valued solutions, but it has complex, or it could have a repeated root. All right, and those are the other cases we're going to be getting to next. Okay, so that's what we're going to be dealing with. Um, there. So we just verified what was said in this first example in the textbook. All right, now I think in the rest of this video I'm just going to do a little bit more practice with complex numbers. All right, I've got in one note here the handout that I would normally give you in class. All right, so again, here's the definition for i. All right, i is defined to be the square root of negative 1, and therefore i squared comes out to the square root of negative 1 times itself, well whenever you square a square root you get what's underneath, so that gives us the fundamental identity that when you square i it comes out to negative 1. All right, so that's why it's called a imaginary number because there's no real numbers for which that happens for. Alright, now I'm assuming you've watched some of the other videos and I just want to do a little bit of the arithmetic with complex numbers right now and then in another video I'm going to talk about the polar form and using Euler's formula. Okay, so just a little bit from the front here, we're, we're always going to write complex numbers in this format, a plus bi. Okay, a plus bi, a is what we call the real part, all right, of the complex number. A lot of times math books use z, uh, letters like z and w to denote complex numbers. We call b the imaginary part, so the coefficient of i is what we call the imaginary part of that complex number. Right, the other portion is the real part. Keep in mind A and B could be positive, negative, or zero. All right, if B is coming out to zero, then we're not talking about a complex number necessarily. We're talking about a real number. All right, now just a quick bit of notation here, right? The real number system a lot of times is denoted with this bold face R. That's a subset of the complex number system, which is a lot of times in math books denoted with this bold C. So the complex number system contains the real number system. Okay, um, let's do a few examples from the back of this. All right, and I'll go over to my written notes to work a couple out. Let's just do a couple with the, maybe we'll do a couple right here actually if we have room. And then in the next video we'll do some practice with uh, the polar form of complex numbers. So when you're adding and subtracting complex numbers, very straightforward. Just combine like terms. Add the real parts, add the imaginary parts. So in this case we're going to get 3 plus 2, which is 5, is the real part, plus 5 minus 3 is going to give us 2i. So 5i minus 3i is 2i. No big deal there. Let's talk about the multiplication. So going on number, we used to number 1, looking at number 3 here. If you think about expanding this out, multiplying this out like you, you know, normally kind of would with a couple of binomials, we get 1 times 1, which is 3, 1 times 4i, which is 4i. The middle term, or distributing the 2i through the second factor, is going to give us 2i times 3, which would be 6i, so plus 6i. And then we get plus 2 times 4, which is 8, and then i times i, which is i squared. All right, but now here's where we're going to put in and replace i squared by negative 1. So this is really going to be 3 plus 4i plus 6i minus 8. Okay, and after you get more practice with it, you can directly skip to that. And instead of writing i squared down, just write negative whatever that term is. So in this case, it comes up to negative 8. Now combining your like terms, we're getting here negative 5 plus 10i. Okay, so whenever we multiply two complex numbers, we're going to get a complex number back again. Okay, as a special case of that, when we multiply, let's just do number 5. When we multiply a complex number by its conjugate, all right, let's multiply this out, and their conjugates, because they have the same real part, and the imaginary parts are just negatives of one another. Let's see what happens when we multiply a number by its conjugate. We're going to get, in this case, 3 times 3, which is 9, 3 times a negative 4i minus 12i, plus 12i, all right, so those cancel out, and right? we're adding, a, we're multiplying a sometimes a difference, we know those cross terms cancel, but we're going to then get negative 16i squared. Well, these cancel out, they add up to 0, we're going to get 9, and then the i squared is negative 1, so when we negate the, the minus 16, it's going to turn to plus 16, which is going to give us 25. 
So it is also possible to multiply two complex numbers and get a real number, keeping in mind though that complex numbers, or pardon me, real numbers are also complex numbers. All right, so I think that's all we're going to uh, do for this video. All right, but the one thing to keep in mind when we're finding our eigenvalues and our eigenvectors, as we did it earlier, we're a lot of times going to be simplifying expressions involving square roots. So for instance, let's just write another one down as another example. Suppose after solving a, quadra a uh, characteristic equation, we end up with, say, lambda equals negative 6 plus or minus the square root of negative 20, um, 5 underneath the square root, all divided by whatever, 4. It's making a number up here. We want to always express that in terms of i. So for instance, we're going to write this as negative 6 plus or minus the square root of 25 we know is 5, and that is going to be times the square root of negative 1, which is i, divided by 4. Ooh, divided by 4, pardon me, not 2. Distributing the 4 up into each one of these, we get negative 6 over 4 plus or minus 5 fourths i, which you can leave like that or simplify to negative 3 halves plus or minus 5 fourths i. Okay, so that's going to happen every time if we end up with a negative under a square root, we want to write that in terms of i in terms of a complex number.